I want to thank you guys for joining us today. This is part three of our four-part electricity webinar series. We've been talking about supply chain tracking technologies. Uh, just as a broad topic, we've gone over uh, tagging technologies in our, our first episode. Uh, in the previous session, we went through indoor positioning and essentially what you need to know about that at a very uh, introductory level. In today's session, we decided to get a little bit more specific to, uh, to industries and to verticals, uh, going over specific use cases on how can IPS be used for manufacturing, distribution, and retail. Those are the three areas that we really wanted to focus on in this session. So we will go ahead and dive right into that in a moment. So uh, just brief overview. For those of you who have been on previous, uh, previous webinars, this will all look the same. We've recycled the same content for these, but essentially how we'll be conducting this webinar is I'll introduce myself and our company. I'll review uh, what we've done the past two webinars, and then what we'll be looking at for our fourth and final webinar. And then we'll hop into uh, indoor positioning, all the things that, uh, that you need to know about retail, manufacturing, and distribution. We will then hold a Q&A session uh, towards the end. Uh, what I will say about that is, if you'll notice, I have everybody muted on the Zoom meeting. Um, it's, it's best for us because we, we do capture this content and post it on YouTube. Uh, so I do like to keep everybody muted just in case we, uh, we get any unnecessary background noise. So um, we will be conducting the Q&A session through the chat feature in Zoom. So uh, if you have any questions that come up during the presentation, uh, write them down, but keep them written down until we get to the dedicated Q&A session. And then I will start to address uh, those questions as they come in. If for some reason we get a lot of questions and we run out of time, um, reach out to somebody uh, on the electricity side, myself or Susan Timmons would be a great place to start. Um, and we'd be happy to get your question answered and uh, just uh, give you a more a more personalized opportunity to, to talk about this. So um, even if you uh, don't have any questions, but maybe something comes up after the webinar, uh, reach out to one of us. We'd be happy to uh, chat with you. And then after that, we'll close and just do a little bit of, uh, just a recap on where we've been and where we're going. So introductions. Uh, my name is Christian Garcia. If you've been on a couple of these webinars, you probably know me by now. I'm a product manager here at Aptricity, and I work on our supply chain management software platforms. Uh, basically, what that consists of is enterprise asset management, enterprise inventory management, and field service management. Uh, a little bit about Aptricity. We've been in the supply chain business for over 20 years. Uh, we work with uh, large organizations like the, uh, the U.S. Army, work with Verizon, Brinks, um, we work with various uh, branches of the uh, U.S. Air Force as well, stationed around the world. So uh, we have a lot of experience in the supply chain world. Uh, we've been doing it for a long time, and uh, we hope that we can use these webinars as a means of uh, sharing some of that industry expertise that we've gained over the years and just informing you on what's the best way to optimize your supply chain using tracking technologies. Obviously, today we'll be talking more about indoor positioning and how it can help um, in the in the industries of retail and then manufacturing and distribution. So where have we been? We started with our first session on July 13th, uh, going over the different tagging technologies for your supply chain. Uh, in the previous session, we went through basically the, uh, the 101 of IPS. Today, we'll be doing more of an industry spotlight on IPS. And then our final session will be making sense of supply chain tracking technologies. So uh, for those who have been a part of each of these, uh, you'll know that we've done these every Wednesday at 1030 a.m. Central, or we've, we've started each of these on a Wednesday at 1030 a.m. Central, uh, space two weeks apart. We'll keep that same format for the fourth and final session. Um, as I've mentioned, we've been posting these on our YouTube channel, which has recently uh, been reformatted and we've added some new content to that. So we would uh, encourage you guys to go check it out. If you want to revisit this session, you can go see that on our YouTube channel. So without further ado, let's hop into really the, uh, the, the main content for today's webinar. And I wanted to start by giving a quick recap on indoor positioning. You know, we spent our whole webinar last, uh, last session going over indoor positioning, what it is and how it works, how it helps. So I wanted to give a quick recap. Uh, like I mentioned, if you didn't catch that episode, uh, it may be it may be more valuable if you're if you're watching these you know in your in your spare time it may be more valuable to watch this one before we hop into this one because we'll be 
you know, going uh, using a lot of the same terminology and, and uh, making the assumption that you did watch the second one. So um, we'll, we have a little bit more of a deeper explanation into IPS and how it works in the, uh, the prior session. So we do encourage you to go watch that if you haven't seen it before. But uh, for today's session, we'll start by just doing a quick uh, recap on, on what we covered last time. So indoor positioning, uh, it's used to provide location information inside an area like a building, a warehouse, or really any enclosed space. Um, we talked a little bit in the previous session about GPS and how those two are, are closely related and how they work. We talked about using trilateration for, um, for location updating. We're not using triangulation, we're using trilateration. Uh, but basically, we used fixed readers, Bluetooth beacon tags, and a floor map of a location to create an IPS solution that provides automated updates for asset or inventory movement. So the four components, we have fixed readers, Bluetooth tags, a floor map, and then an asset or inventory management solution where all this data gets, uh, gets collected and sent. Uh, things like interference and movement frequency can affect the location accuracy. So when we, when we deploy this for a customer here at Electricity, we often spend a lot of time in the warehouse or storehouse outlining the best possible scenario, the best possible outfitting of controllers and tags uh, to maximize read range and read accuracy. Uh, one of the things we mentioned in the previous session is that Bluetooth, uh, while it's a, it's, a, a reliable, it's a reliable technology for tracking, you can still get some, some data in there that's maybe doesn't make the most sense. Uh, you can get some outliers things that uh, don't quite fit in with the, the majority of the data that you're collecting. And so that's why we wanted to mention, you know, there are things that can get in the way of Bluetooth being, you know, this perfect solution. And what we like to say is that there really is no perfect solution, right? I think just based off of the limitations of the technology, you do the best you can with what you have. Uh, with Bluetooth, we've been able to achieve uh, high location accuracy results. Uh, but sometimes if there's interference, if there's, things that get in the way, if things are moving frequently, if tags aren't broadcasting at a, at a, um, you know, a, a quick, consistent frequency, then your location accuracy uh, gets larger, right? So instead of maybe being within a nine foot radius, now we're within maybe a 30 foot radius. And so one of the things that we forgot to mention last week that I, I or not last week, but last session that I really wanted to bring forward in this session was how do I get to that last 30 feet? You know, how do I get exactly to where the asset is or the inventory item is? And that's where we get into this, this feature called find my tag, right? This is something that we, that we at Electricity built into our mobile, uh, our mobile asset management application. Uh, it's available in the iOS and the Apple or the uh, iOS and Android stores. But essentially what this feature does is when an IPS solution does not provide enough accuracy, users can pull this app up on their phone and they can search for a tag that they're looking for. You know, obviously that tag would be associated with an asset or an inventory item. And they can go and do what we like to call Marco Polo or hot cold, right? As you're getting closer to that tag and you're walking around looking for it, you'll get a stronger signal. And that represents that you're getting warmer, right? If you're standing right on top of it, uh, you may, be, you may be red hot, right? And so this is a feature that we deploy in conjunction with IPS to say, if IPS is not getting you in a small enough circle of location accuracy, this feature is what gets you the rest of the way. And so, like I mentioned, there's a lot of variables for why IPS uh, may not be able to get you to within that nine feet or maybe less. Um, and a lot of that's kind of out of our control as a solutions provider. Um, a lot of it has to do with the technology, the way that the warehouse is is uh, established, if there's a lot of metal, a lot of uh, interference, you're not gonna get that same level of accuracy, but this is what gets you the rest of the way, All right? So basically what, what we use on this end is called RSSI, which stands for Received Signal Strength Indicator. And the lower you get is indicates a, or well, the higher you get, it gets confusing because all the values are in negative numbers. So technically negative 90 is a lower value than negative 40, but you kind of get confused with the negatives, right? So um, the the higher value that you get is actually the closer you are, right? So I have a little typo here in the uh, slideshow, but um, 
it's a popular technology. I actually, I used this yesterday. Um, I was looking for my AirPods at my house. And for those of you who are Apple users, um, if you, if you want to see kind of an example of this in action, if you have AirPods or um, maybe, you know, an Apple watch or, or some sort of device connected to the find my network um, that Apple provides, go into that and ser start searching for, you know, your AirPods or your watch. Uh, do this from your phone. And it has this really cool visualization of, okay, first the thing, first thing it does is it connects to the device. And then as you're walking around, it'll tell you you're getting closer, you're getting closer. Okay, now start looking for it in your immediate area, right? It's a very well thought out feature. We're employing the same technology on our mobile app. Uh, as you're moving around, as you're getting closer, there's a range of, you know, of, there's a foot range telling you, okay, how close are you now to the item? And as you continue to get closer, at some point you can visually identify, hey, here's where this item is. Now I, you know, now I know exactly where it's at. So this is a good feature to, to deploy in conjunction with IPS. If you have the perfect IPS solution with no interference or, you know, issues that come up, you may not need this. Uh, but for other instances where, you know, the system can't provide the best level of accuracy. This is what gets you the rest of the way. So find my tag, also known as find my asset in, in the electricity system. Um, it uses Bluetooth RSSI values to indicate whether or not you're moving closer to an item. Um, one of the big use cases that we'll hop into later in this webinar for IPS is finding lost or misplaced items in a large area. So if IPS gets you within a 30-foot radius of where we think the thing may be, this is the best feature to get you to exactly where that thing would be. So find my tag, find my asset, find my inventory, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is the feature that, that you can use to literally walk around using your phone and finding, okay, here, I see it now, right? So let's get into manufacturing distribution and retail. These are the three areas that we decided to do our focus on for today's, se today's session. And really what we wanted to talk about was how outfitting your warehouses uh, with an IPS solution, how that provides solutions to a lot of the problems that you face, right? You can tag anything, assets, inventory, you can tag personnel, um, anything that you really need location services for. And I mentioned near real-time location services. And, and the reason for that is because as we continue to improve our system of electricity and as others uh, you know, improve theirs as well, it takes time for that data to be collected and then sent to the cloud, right? We mentioned this in the, the previous webinar session, you know, that, that information gets collected by readers and then it gets sent off to the cloud, you know, uh, whether it's to an inventory or an asset management system. Those time gaps are starting to shrink. So I'll, I'll mention this later in the webinar, but uh, when we spoke on that last session, we said, you know, the quickest that we could get electricity was 10 minutes, you know, location updates every 10 minutes. Um, I mentioned that we've got smart people working for us, people that are way smarter than I and uh, way smarter than me. I, that just proves that they're smarter than I am. So uh, we've got our, we've got that time frequency down to five minutes now, and it will continue to shrink how quickly those updates can be made. Uh, but that's what we call it near real time. Real time means you're getting updates every second. Right. And that's not what this is. Uh, but some of the main benefits that you get from an IPS solution is a reduction in shrinkage. You can help prevent theft. I say help prevent theft. You can never fully prevent theft. I think for those who have been in the industry long enough, you just know you do everything you can to keep people from stealing items or, you know, hiding them or watching items walk out of the warehouse. Right. You do as much as you can, but um, I've yet to see a technology that can solve the human problem. So uh, at the end of the day, technology is a great tool to help prevent theft, but uh, it's never going to fully prevent theft, right? Uh, other benefits include optimization of put-away procedures, uh, location of missing items, right? We kind of mentioned those things. So let's dive into it. Let's dive into some use cases. We baked out a couple of, uh, of common examples that we've seen in our time in the industry. And so let's just dive right in. So use case number one, let's talk about a large retail store. Um, there's an anecdote that our CEO loves to, to share. Um, electricity employees have probably heard this 
you know, anywhere between 10 to 50 times, right? Uh, think about going to Best Buy, right? And I'm looking for, you know, maybe the latest iPhone or an iPad or I've been giving Apple a lot of shout outs in this session. So let's say I'm looking for a Samsung tablet. Let's uh, broaden the scope here or a TV, right? And the inventory system says, I, I know I have four of these in stock. And, you know, I go to the section in the store where it's supposed to be. And lo and behold, it's not there. And, you know, the employee that's helping you spends the next 15 to 20, sometimes 30 minutes looking for that item in the store. Uh, we can't find it. The system says we have four. We, we can't find them anywhere, right? And then maybe you leave because you're fed up from waiting. And then, you know, the second you leave, it, ha it has to happen this way. The second you leave, the guy finds it, right? But you're already out the door. And, and so you have to go somewhere else, right? You just wasted all this time. This is the problem that we're trying to solve in this use case, right? I have employees who are spending way too much time looking for specific products. My inventory system says we have, you know, multiple in stock, but we can't find any on the sales floor or in storerooms. You know, when you're working in a large retail environment, I have worked personally in a large retail environment before. If you're trying to find something for a customer who's impatient, you're going to grab the first thing you can find, right? Maybe you're moving things around and, you know, you're putting together an order for a customer and then they decide they don't want it anymore, right? So as items move around, it's impossible to manually track where these things are going. And that's where IPS comes in and solves that problem. Each tagged item has their location updated in near real time. We just talked a little bit about that. Um, providing employees with the current location of items. You don't have to go walk around uh, and look for that specific item. You can pull up, you know, pull up uh, an app on your tablet or your smartphone, or you can get on a computer and say, okay, I'm looking for this specific product number. Show me where it's out on the floor map. Okay, well, it's over here in the northeast corner. Now I can go walk over there and, and actually find it, right? If you're tagging the items, the retail items that you're selling that you want to keep track of, you can get that level of location accuracy and, and eliminate that time spent looking for lost or missing items. Uh, you can also get a location history as part of that as well. So basically, as items are moving around, you can see their last known location. You can see where they've been at over a specific defined period of time. And so that kind of helps that kind of helps give you the the feedback to say, well, why is why are these particular items moving more than others? Right. Why? Why are my TVs being placed in this section of the storehouse versus this section where I know they're supposed to be? Right. And so you can start to address different um, different shortcomings in, you know, in employee behavior with some of this data and some of these metrics that you can capture. So that's use case number one, large retail store. Use case number two, tracking perishable goods. Uh, this is a very, very common use case for, for grocery stores, uh, cold chain, things like um, we've, we've done uh, at Electricity, we've worked with um, EMS departments who are tracking the temperature of narcotics. So anything that's perishable, right? Uh, things that can expire over a certain period of time or if they're not kept within the proper you know, temperature range, those are things we would define as perishable goods, right? So here's our problem. My warehouse that I manage experiences high rates of shrinkage due to product expiration. When my workers routinely pick and ship the first items they find, we have product that has a closer expiration date that's not being sent out, right? We, um, we did some work with a, a beverage company here at Electricity that had this exact problem. And basically they said, you know, we have, we have uh, beverages that are, are expiring. You know, we have a certain period of time in which we need to send them out. Um, if we don't send them out by a particular point in time, then we have to mark those products down. So if we start talking about grocery stores and you see, uh, you know, you see soda products that are, you know, two for, you know, two packs for $10 or, you know, three packs for $9, right? Basically, a lot of times, if you go and look at the expiration dates on those products, you'll see that that expiration date is quickly approaching, right? So grocery stores will mark items down because they don't have a lot of time for the expiration date. And so the value of that product is obviously less. So from a warehouse perspective, if you're distributing these products, an IPS solution, if you pair this with an inventory management solution that can track things like expiration date, production date, lot number, things of that nature, IPS can provide the location of your inventory pallets or however you're storing your inventory, basically highlighting those that have a closer expiration date. 
right? So again, we, we talked a little bit about this uh, in the retail example, but as an employee, if you've got an impatient um, customer that's waiting on you, you're going to go find the first thing you can find. Your, your, your top priority is not adhering to the procedure, you know, to the store procedure for storing items. Your first priority is to go appease the customer, right? And so in a similar way in the warehouse side of things, Say, say you're a warehouse worker and it's it's 4, 4.45 p.m. You know you get off at five and you get an order that has to be shipped immediately. You're not gonna stick around and look around for the expiration date that's, that's the closest to your current date. You're gonna go find the first thing that you can that matches that product, right? And so basically how IPS helps in this sense when paired with an inventory management solution is not only are we tracking the pallets of the perishable goods, we're also associating expiration dates, lot numbers, you know, when these were produced, if there was another manufacturer who manufactured these, we could track things of that nature. And so you're marrying that information of location data with optimized picking, right? If you're providing one of your warehouse workers with the exact location of the exact item you want them to pick, that's different than them driving around looking for the best thing to pick, right? So you're saving time and effort, you're reducing shrinkage, by, you know, and some of these, some of these warehouses can be huge, right? We've worked with customers with a million square feet in, in their warehouse. And to have the, to have a warehouse worker have to go look for, you know, a single pallet or a single specific item to go pick, it can take a long time. And so, like I mentioned, a lot of times what happens is they just go find the first thing they can find that will fulfill the order. And then next thing you know, you've got a lot of inventory that's that's expiring or or that has already perished. And now your inventory systems are getting off track because, you know, it says that these things are here, but they're not actually, you know, sellable units or shippable units, right? So this is where, you know, IPS can really come in and help when you're tracking perishable goods. Moving on to number three. Tracking scanners within a warehouse. This is something that we've actually seen a, a, a huge uptick in um, on the electricity side. We have a handful of people who are looking to do this exact thing. So maybe you're a company that has a, you know, an inventory tracking solution or an asset tracking solution already deployed in your warehouse. And you utilize scanners to scan items, update quantities, update locations, you know, things of that nature. You know, do your picking and packing and shipping or receiving, right? These are all things that you can do uh, and that you can um, start that process with by using a scanner. But how do you keep track of the scanners, right? If you're buying, you know, sometimes millions of dollars worth of scanners that you're trying to track inside your store, a lot of times, and this is what we've experienced, is that warehouse workers, they know, you know, they know the new, the new scanners that are coming in, the new technology that maybe was just recently ordered, they know that this is the latest and greatest. It'll help them get their work done sooner. And so they'll hide them so that nobody else can find them. Uh, maybe they'll, you know, they'll put them away in a secret compartment or, you know, secret area of the warehouse that when they get back in the morning, they say, okay, I know that it's still going to be here because nobody else knows my secret spot, right? So that's one of the big problems. And if it, a lot of times as well, when these scanners get checked out at the beginning of the day, if they don't get checked back in, then they don't get they don't get charged overnight, and therefore you have less scanners to use during the next day. And now the whole point of buying scanners is you know is completely nullified because half of your scanners aren't charged, and they don't charge in five minutes, right? They take time. So, you know that's kind of another another big problem to solve is you know how do we get all of our scanners back to one location, right? We check them out at the beginning of the day. Our, our employees are using them to do, you know, to do their job. The scanners are working great, but I got to make sure that they all get back to the same spot. So how does IPS help in that? Uh, IPS shows the location of all the items. It shows the location of scanners that have yet to be returned. One of the concepts that we use in Aptricity is the current location and the home location, right? So basically differentiating between where it currently is, but where it ultimately belongs, right? And so a scanner in, in, in the context of, you know, a floor map for IPS, you know, maybe you have a section of your, of your warehouse that's man, that's a uh, labeled charging station, right? And then you have a section that's labeled, you know, uh, you know, shipping or receiving, right? As the IPS solution is placing these scanners on the floor map, 
it's updating the current location to say it's now in this section of the warehouse. It's now in this section. So at the end of the day, you can run a report to say, I want to see every item that's in the charging station. And if it's not matching up with all the items that are supposed to be there, you know that there's things that you still need to go out and find. And this is also where we find um, the find my asset, find my tag, find my inventory, right? Those are all synonymous. We find that feature set to be beneficial in going to determine where the exact thing is. So if I'm if I if I have 30 feet of accuracy for this item, I pull up my phone, I say, take me to this item. I'm walking around, I'm looking around, you know, there's a lot of different, you know, it's not just X, Y, but also Z, right? You're looking around, oh, there it is, right? Pick it up, find it, return it to its final location. Next time the IPS system does a scan, it'll update that current location. You don't have to manually do that. So this is a way of ensuring that these scanners within your warehouse storehouse, retail store, wherever you're using them, they're making it back to where they're ultimately supposed to be. And then on the back end in the, you know, the, the cloud hosted asset or inventory management solution, you can run reports saying uh, what's, what's in a current location that does not match the home location, right? This will give you a, a, an at a glance view of here are all the items that are not where they're supposed to be. Right. So that's kind of the, again, it's the marriage of IPS and, uh, the cloud-hosted asset and inventory management solutions. And then also the mobile app and, and, and using the ranging function to get to where you need to go. And our final use case, um, managing tools that get checked out. Um, again, this is another popular use case that we seem to uh, encounter quite frequently in our, um, in our work and with our customers is checking things out and expecting to get them back in at the end of the day. This is similar to the scanner, um, to the to the scanner use case that we just mentioned, uh, with the exception that when you're giving an employee a scanner, a lot of times you're not physically saying scanner one, two, three, four is going to John Doe, right? Maybe you're just giving them out without making an actual, you know, tie-in to the personnel who's taking it out. This use case is different in the sense that as I'm checking things out at the beginning of the day, you know, uh, let's use a construction company, for example. If I have a big storehouse and I have employees that are going to do work throughout the day, you usually have a foreman or somebody who's in charge of a storehouse who is checking these items out to specific employees, right? Um, you know, construction workers. But they expect to get them back at the end of the day because these, these are company-owned um, tools and assets. Uh, you may be leasing them, which, you know, introduces a whole new level of, of responsibility for managing those assets. Um, but the problem is I manage the tool storehouse. I check out items to employees and I can't quickly see if everything got brought back, right? So if we were, you know, on a construction site, you may, you may decide you want to use a GPS tag for some of these tags. So that way you can get more of that real-time location accuracy. But in terms of IPS, what we're looking for here is how do we track everything in the storehouse, right? And a lot of times, you know, if we go back way, way back to our first webinar uh, topic about the different tagging technologies, maybe these tools aren't worth having a, a tag that you pay a monthly fee for, right? Maybe maybe you the, having the Bluetooth tag and tracking it in the storehouse, maybe that's enough, right? Maybe you're tracking, you know, multiple thousands of dollars worth of tools. And in that scenario, maybe it is valuable to have a GPS tag on those. But you know, if you want to if you want to go deeper into that topic, the different tagging technologies, we just recommend uh, watching the very first webinar topic that we covered. Um, it gives a good layout of the different tags that you can use um, and how they are best used, right? But in this scenario, we're talking about tracking things at the storehouse, right? So when you integrate IPS with a check-in checkout solution. You can now say, okay, here's who I here's who I check this item out to. I don't see this item in my storehouse. I need to go directly contact that person to say, hey, you know, drill, you know, drill two, three, four. You didn't check that back in. Where's it at? Right. This helps reduce things like theft, um, items walking off the job site. You hear that that terminology quite frequently, um, specifically when it comes to construction. But essentially. 
the 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 picture that we're trying to paint in today's session is IPS is a great standalone solution, but when you start to integrate it with an asset or inventory management solution, you get the benefits of multiple solutions working together, right? Now, if you integrate a check-in checkout system, you can say, I know that I gave this out to, you know, to John Doe. I gave him these four items, but he only brought these three back. Where's that fourth item at, right? And you can reach out to that person and say, hey, where's the fourth item? Oh, I forgot it. It's in my truck. I'm coming back now to bring it in. Or, well, I don't know. I don't remember taking out a fourth item. Well, now I have an audit record that says, yeah, you, you did take that out. Where did it go, right? And so there's all these different, you know, all these different solutions. These are just four that we chose to focus on because these are very prevalent in the work that we've done here at Optricity, right? IPS is a new, it's a newer solution, right? It's not, it's not something that, you know, has been in the market for a long time. So we're still identifying these use cases. And that's kind of the excitement of this product is that uh, there are things that, that are, are, you know, use cases that are out there that we don't even know about yet that, you know, as, as a, you know, a customer, as we work with prospective customers or just people out in the industry, they're bringing up all these new use cases, you know, proving out that this, that this solution is a viable solution, right? There's a lot of different applications for it. And so these are the four that we chose to focus on today. Um, I guarantee you there will be plenty more that come out and, you know, perhaps we'll do some, some marketing content or some blogs on some of these different use cases as time goes on. Um, but these are the four that we wanted to focus on today because we thought that they were the most relevant to, uh, to retail, to distribution, and to um, manufacturing. So where do we go from here? What's the future of IPS? A lot of this salute or a lot of this slide is taken from the previous session because you know we wanted to go through, you know, what can we look forward to in the solution, right? Uh, faster location updating. You know, we just mentioned that, right? The number on this is no longer accurate. It's now five minutes. Every five minutes we can update the amount of location accuracy, at least in electricity, right? And there are other providers out there that may be doing something similar, but um, we're constantly improving that time that the location can be updated, right? Because we want to get it to close to real time as possible. And there's, you know, there's trade-offs with that, you know, the amount of times that the Bluetooth tag has to ping and that can affect the battery life and things of that nature. But we're ultimately trying to get as close to real time tracking as possible so that when you pull up your app or you get on your computer, you're always getting the latest information that, that's, that's, uh, that's sent to the system. One of the things about our 8.0 system, our, our latest asset management system, is on the map, we now have what's called push mapping. So um, if you think about push notifications on your phone, right, you're just receiving these notifications passively. You don't have to do anything to go gather those notifications. Uh, for example, think about your email inbox. You used to have to update your email inbox, you know, do the send receive function, right, to get anything that was coming your way or send anything out, right? That would be considered pull notifications, right? You actually have to go and pull the latest information. When we're talking about push notifications, or in this case, push mapping, that information is being sent automatically. You don't have to do anything to go receive it. So as things are changing, you're watching them change, as opposed to having to refresh your browser, you know, pull down on the, on the app to get the latest refresh. Um, you're getting that stuff in real time, right? So as we get closer to real-time tracking with IPS, you put push mapping into the equation. Now you're literally watching the dots move around as they're moving throughout the day. And so as we get closer to that real time, that becomes a really cool thing. I've seen a proof of concept of this and it looks really cool. You can see, you know, see the dots moving around, you know, representing their actual movement as it's happening. Uh, better location accuracy. You know, we talked a little bit about what Bluetooth 5 has to offer for uh, location accuracy with angle of arrival and angle of departure. Um, machine learning plays a big role in this. Basically, um, we talked a little bit about RSSI, using RSSI as a value for uh, how close or how far away you are from the tag. RSSI can be finicky at times. Um, you, can get, you can get outlier data. You know, for example, if I, I could be reading at a negative 60 uh, DBM, and then the next second I could be reading at negative 20 or negative 40, right? And that's a big variance between, you know, if I'm standing still and I'm at negative 60, but the next second I'm at negative 40, that means 
a lot of different things in terms of real world application. Uh, the work that we've done in our testing at Aptricity is to associate essentially um, uh, our psi ranges with real world uh, distances in feet, right? You can also convert that to meters simply. So if you're standing still and an RSI value comes in that says negative 40, but the next one says negative 80, that's a wide range of variance there. And so where machine learning comes into play is to help clean up some of that data, that, um, that RSSI data that comes in that has a high level of variance. And as the Bluetooth protocols continue to advance as well, you know, we are in the Bluetooth 5, um, we are in the Bluetooth 5 world. I can't remember if it's dot two or dot three um, or dot four, but that that data gets more reliable as the technology advances. And so um, the benefits that you can provide from you know Bluetooth and furthermore an IPS solution today will only continue to improve as the technology improves. And then finally, we talked about cheaper tags and cheaper readers, right? The cost of the infrastructure will also continue to go down. In terms of actual supply chains of micro components, right? Microchips, the things, the chip shortages that we hear about so often, uh, that's gonna end someday, I would like to hope. And so the cost of, of Bluetooth will, will continue to go down. The infrastructure for setting up a system will continue to go down. And as the accuracy goes up, these systems will become more reliable and less expensive. Um, and if we go back to the use cases that we went through, uh, there's just uh, there's a lot of different applications, a lot of different problems we can solve with this solution. And uh, we expect that more companies will start to adopt this as part of their warehouse management, as part of their you know retail store you know storefront management. Um, so we're excited to see kind of where this technology goes. And we're excited to see how uh, these new use cases are going to pop up, things that we haven't even heard about yet. Uh, we're excited to hear where the you know where the, the the product is going, where the system is going, and and how uh, we can use it as a way to prevent or um, reduce a lot of these supply chain issues that companies are facing. So that's the future of IPS. Um, that's the end of the majority of the webinar content. We're going to swap into our Q and A session. I'm going to pull up the uh, Zoom chat. And if you have a question, feel free to type one in and we will address it here. Okay, question here from Mario. Are reports pushed automatically at end of day to supervising needing to reconcile equipment? Yes, they can be. Um, in the electricity system, we can set up um, daily reporting. We can set up hourly reporting. Essentially, you can set up a reporting scheduler that will automatically push those out via PDF format. Uh, there's different formats besides PDF, but the typical format that we push is in PDF. And you can schedule those out, dictate who needs to receive those. And so management can, can view those reports as they're being sent over. Uh, you can also go run reports on an ad hoc schedule. So um, if you need to go into the system and, and run a report, you can. But uh, yes, you can schedule those and push those out. Any other questions? I know um, we discussed a lot. A lot of this was a little bit of a recap of last week's content, just or last session's content with a little bit more focus on specific use cases. So I can understand if you were in last week's session, maybe. I keep saying last week. Last last session, you know, there may not be a lot of questions left. But um, you know, as I mentioned, if you can if you think of anything after the webinar, uh, you can reach out to myself. My my email is cgarcia at aptricity.com. Reach out to Susan Timmons. Um, We'd be happy to answer any questions you have. So I'll give it a few more minutes just uh, in case any other questions roll in, but then we'll go ahead and close up. We do want to thank you guys again for, for joining this session. Um, this is the third of a four-part series. We will be wrapping up this webinar series uh, in two weeks' time at the exact same time, 10.30 a.m. Central. Uh, we will have the same uh, Zoom link sent out as um, part of that invitation. Uh, the last session, we're going to be talking about making sense of tracking technologies. I, I kind of see this as being a recap of the things that we've talked about in the previous three sessions. Um, if you want to learn more, feel free to visit our website at aptricity.com. If you'd like to schedule a demo, um, we can do that as well. We'd be happy to reach out to you specifically and, and talk a little bit more about this if, uh, if there's things that we didn't cover. Um, all of our webinars are available on YouTube. Uh, so I know that we mentioned in the past, you know, we'd be willing to send you a copy if you request one. Uh, we found that YouTube is just a better, a better uh, method for doing that. So you can visit our, our revamped YouTube channel. We'll be posting a lot more often on that platform. 
um, not just webinars, but we also have a podcast that we've started. Uh, we'll be doing some shorts from the podcast onto YouTube. Uh, we've also uh, done a lot more work on our social media side of things. So you can follow us on our social media platforms. If you search Aptricity, uh, you can you can find what we're up to on the uh, the it's Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn. So uh, Ben's nodding in the background. So I know that I got that one right. Um, and then again, if you have any questions for me, uh, you can email me at cgarcia at aptricity.com. I uh, would be happy to go into uh, uh, further detail. And also, if you want to get on our um, our company newsletters or any of our release notes schedules, just let me know and we will get you signed up for that. But that is all I have prepared for today. Again, thank you guys for joining and we hope to see you in session four where we will be recapping everything. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day and thank you for joining.